Hello, my name is Kim Billington. I'm introducing you to a new downloadable resource, which you can get from my website, kimbillington.com.au. It's a collection of 35 illustrations by Chris Munro, all around metaphors that can be helpful in counselling. So, of course, in the front cover, we've got an example of life. There are things that are wonderful in life, times we get to hang out with our friends and play and really, you know, enjoy connection. And then there's others where we've got to do something that we don't want or being forced to do something we don't want. Or life's just tough. I would like to acknowledge that I live and work and play on the lands of the Bunurong people, southeast of Melbourne, Nam. So Chris and I worked on my second book, Counselling Conversations, 10 Powerful Interviews with Seasoned Experts. And he did uh, many drawings in this book, um, which really started me. <laughs> he had one here, Alexa, turn down my anxiety. Um, I, I love to colour the pictures <laughs> in the book. Um, and it got me started, you know, pictures are really helpful. When people often gave comments that they love the illustrations in my first book um, and A Counselor's Companion and, and the second book. And I thought, I use a lot of metaphors. What if Chris and I collaborate and create a resource using pictures, adding the metaphor having some prompts available and that will help counsellors, you know, develop another aspect of their practice. In that second book there, one of the illustrations is an example of the, I call it the t-shirt exercise. So I get people to uh, cut out a t-shirt or draw a t-shirt shape on a piece of paper and um, on the front I'll get them to write down the things that they like the world to know. And this is the illustration. Everything's fine. On the back of the T-shirt, I get them to write the things that they don't want the world to know. Um, so this one says, I can't cope. What's wrong with me? So that YouTube link there would take you to uh, an example of that T-shirt exercise. But you can see through this image alone, something is conveyed to you. So the T-shirt is the metaphor, what we show the world. You can contact Chris uh, via his email, fishscaleshingle at yahoo.com. And, of course, I've got my website, kimbillington.com.au. I use narrative therapy as my primary theoretical approach, um, but also I use somatic and, uh, of course, person-centred theories underpinning my work. Both of my books are available on my website as well. For those that are at the live recording um, event, there's some prizes. So soak in this little um, quote. Our souls do not speak human language. They communicate to us through symbols, metaphors, visions, poetry, deep feelings, and everyday magic. So a lot of you will have heard of the anger iceberg, and I, I, never, I never warmed to that. <laughs> There's a metaphor. So I really felt that anger was far more of a, a heated kind of fiery, Thing. So I looked at the element of fire and the volcano came to mind. So many years ago, I drew this and I asked clients, what are the three or four things that are happening before there's an explosion of anger? So say I'm working with a 10 year old, you know, we, they can draw this or I can show this um, drawing, uh, which is free downloadable from my website. Um, and they can talk that through. And I, I talk about how anger is often a secondary emotion. It's not a real emotion. Anger involves an action. So either there's the clenched fist or the jaw or the look on the face. 
the bodily stance uh, or movement banging on the table or worse and and how anger is a normal human emotion in fact we'd want it if we have to go and help someone that's being um, assaulted in the street you know we would uh, our anger at what's happening we would run over and and deal with that anger is very helpful for humanity um, but again using the volcano as a metaphor allows people to talk more and less shamefully about their anger. This is a very common um, metaphor that's used. I've also got a uh, one that I use with male clients, firemen. But basically, we're looking at, you know, within, uh, I'll often say, you know, oh, look, you, you look so grown up, <laughs> you know, you're 35. And inside of you are all these other versions of yourself as you are developing your identity and you know, experiencing some of the struggles of growing up. So what would you like to say to your seven-year-old self that experienced that trauma? What could you whisper in your little seven-year-old self's ear? And to have the tools, if it's an in-person session, to handle as well, that, that helps. I do a couple of professional development trainings with the Sydney Centre for Creative Change. Uh, and this is two of, I think, six that I do, and they involve metaphors. The first one is the sailboat of life. So that's something I designed myself, especially for male clients. Female clients love it too, but I found the one on the right, the tree of life, often doesn't land well as a creative expressive arts activity. So the sailboat, um, each part represents um, a, a part of the person, like the hull are you know, contains two or three of the people that really have your back, that would be there for you as soon as they receive that text, either as a response or rock up at your door. The shark represents things that you worry about or your fears. Um, and, and so male clients in particular will open up, if you like, and talk more about their life, the sale of the strengths, skills. Um, the sailboat as a, like an introductory um, tool is available free on my website too. So journalists, poets, you know, they use um, metaphors all the time. Elon Musk eats humble pie over unpaid bakery bill. I mean, has anyone seen a humble pie? No, but we know what it means. And uh, now we're seeing some weather extremes on steroids. So metaphors have, for you know, millennia, been part of our journey of communication. So I'm going to go through a few examples now of, of some of the 35 drawings in the book. Um, and each drawing has an introductory statement. And then at the back of the book, um, or the, the last page of the resource, I, I, I laminate mine and then I can refer to it is some question prompts around it. So you can print the book, go to Officeworks and print the downloadable resource or print on demand. So as you're thinking of a client, you can print that picture and bring that to the session. Um, so what's important in, a, in an animal companion? A lot of our clients have had a connection with a pet. It, sometimes it's a really lovely introduction when you're getting to know someone is, you know, did you have pets as a child? Because these kind of things really matter. The first time a child falls in love with someone that's not, you know, from their birth family can often be a pet. I had a rabbit called Mr. Simply. Oh, I adored him. So the question at the back of the um, resource is can you tell me a story about pets in your life pets of grandparents or friends think now think to yourself what was a pet that I had a connection with growing up was it a fish did I have a fish that I won at a, a fun fair did my grandparents have a cat The story that you will tell yourself and the story your clients will tell you will, will, sh will open up some often really positive strength-based identity lifting 
story. So in my case, we didn't have a, a family dog until I was in my teens, but my grandparents had a little fox terrier. And even at the young age of nine, when I went to visit and stay for a few days, I was allowed to take that little dog, their precious dog, on a walk over a kilometre to a park and let the dog off the lead and take it back again. That, that sense of being trusted and that was really important to me and developed part of my, my temperament, my personality. Another one is about emotional nourishment. So we, we do know that a lot of problems that, that clients struggle with began back in childhood and, and clients are often quite reluctant to go back to childhood. Um, so one of the things that they, you know, that you can look at is, well, what did you miss out on? Now, of course, it's not a hamburger, <laughs> as in Chris's illustration. Um, the prompt at the back of the book is, imagine going back to hug the little you, which is like the Russian dolls, yeah? What would you whisper in their ear? Why is that important to you? What were you needing? What were the unmet needs of the younger self? And again, you, do, you can do that somatic work. As the client goes back, it's heavy stuff, yeah? Without the prompt and the metaphor, the client might find it almost impossible to go back, yeah? But you show them this picture, it opens up that uh, sense of, yes, there was something missing. Mm. Chris has done a wonderful job with these illustrations. So this is a really lovely one for the first session. What are your hopes in asking for help? Now, people can colour in these drawings just like I love to do. <laughs> um, and the question prompt, um, yeah. Who else is in your support team? What has helped before? So this is a really great one to get a sense of who's in the client's network. Who do they connect with? And if they say a friend or how often do you catch up with that friend? Is it, you know, how did you, how, how did you get to know them? And what they tell you, the story they tell you will have all sorts of things in it. The little problem might come up or, you know, the person might have cooled off on them for a while and they've just re-engaged or whatever. So in, in narrative therapy, we're listening to the problem that emerges and we're also listening to the strengths and the skills and the identity, hopes and things like that of the client. So we're doing this thing called double listening. Another drawing. If your life was a book, what would the next chapter be called? So this is a, something you would use towards the end of therapy. So you've worked with some of the current problems. You might have gone back and looked at the possible history of the problem. And you're coming to the last couple of sessions and maybe you've been working on um, steps that the client wants to take. And the prompt here, are you writing your life or mostly rereading older chapters? <laughs> of course, you can add to the prompts. You're not limited to the ones I've put at the back. But this is often, again, you that are counsellors watching, you know what it's like. Someone comes in and just when they're about to kind of step into the future, they withdraw and they go back, oh, well, into the past. So by presenting their life as a, as the chapters in a book and that there's been hurtful things um, in earlier chapters and of course we're listening also for some of the beautiful chapters when something special happened someone got some roller skates or roller blades for their birthday unexpectedly or whatever but the so again the, these metaphor illustrations can go in any direction how does your body tell you to change things? So I want you to reflect now as you're sitting here watching this. What does my body say to me to let me know things are uncomfortable or not right? On the bottom left, it says, what is pain saying to you? 
So if you're sitting in a chair and you've got this backache or neck ache, your your body might be saying, oh, you know, move that neck. Rotate the head a little bit nice and gently. Oh, a, t- a tightness in the chest might be saying, take a breath, take a chill pill, you know. And then what is in your first aid kit? You see, these are metaphors. Um, It might be some mindful stretching. Might be going for a walk. That could be in your first aid kit. So, again, the index at the back has got the, um, the picture words and then some possible prompts and um, I use this metaphor it's not in the resource but I use this metaphor with clients who are struggling maybe they're carers of a family member with dementia or um, an adult son with schizophrenia and they're the primary care giver for that person or, or children with you know autism spectrum problems so carers and counsellors who are giving of themselves um, are often looking for some or looking for a job that's not too stressful or and so there's a story about these two frogs and it's it's the middle of summer and they're very dehydrated and they're looking for a pond or something and there's nothing but then they can smell water somewhere and they come to a house where the back door is open and they hop into the kitchen they can smell the water and it's actually in a pot on the stove at the back the the heat's turned way down but the water's cool when they jump in oh my goodness ah that feels great but of course over time as the water gets warmer and warmer it's so incremental they don't notice until it's too late and how often is that with our clients they say to us oh i've got this new relationship it's really nice i'm just worried about this one little thing but look it'll be fine or I've just been employed. I had the interview and now I'm starting a new job. It sounds wonderful. I've told all my friends and then they get there and within a few weeks, there's the pressure for the KPIs and, oh, no, you can't do that. And, oh, I know we said that you you could work remotely and come to the office, but actually we've decided you're only coming to the office or there's micromanagement. So what happens is incrementally one thing on top of another and all of a sudden we're, we're not coping our bodies are telling us something's wrong but we're often locked in Um, we feel locked in so that's why supervision's great it's a great place to talk about those feelings and and work out um, you know what's important here oh this is an example here of some of the training I do I love doing this one called seeing my journey that uh, takes place over three sessions, three two-hour sessions for counsellors to really look at their personal and professional journey and that we draw it as a map. So we, we scaffold that with narrative practices, grief and loss and that kind of thing. Uh, if you're working with children um, and are not sure how to work well with the parents, there's a one, one here called Preparing Parents for Child Counselling. Um, There's a three hour one called playful therapy. So if you're new to child counselling and and don't really want to go down the the whole sand tray play therapy model, um, I introduce many different ideas I use when I'm working with children in in a playful way. Um, Remembering Dan Hughes, pace, playful, acceptance, curiosity, empathy. That's what we need to be. And the one on the bottom right here, stories for therapy, that's a bit like the one I've just told you about the frogs. So we we can tell a story and it conveys something that the listener goes, oh, yeah, that's, whew, yeah. So the stories for therapy are stories we can tell in session to a client. And that's where I teach you the kind of um, stories, very short stories, two or three minute ones that that can be effective. And at the top left, we've got narrative therapy, introduction and externalizing part A. And then we've got mapping the journey after trauma and loss. So that's a series of um, half a dozen ways to bring narrative therapy into a creative, expressive art. So there's the two books.
Counselling Conversations was my second book, um, illustrated by Chris Munro, and A Counsellor's Companion, Creative Adventures for Child Counsellors, Parents and Teachers, was my first book, an Amazon bestseller. <laughs> How about that? Uh, that was illustrated by Tamar Dolev. So I am very grateful for where I am in my life and I can give back um, and share some of the things I've learned. They won't all fit for you, but that's okay. Uh, we can cherry pick. <laughs> Isn't that a good metaphor? Thank you very much. Hope you've been inspired by some of these things. <laughs>